How's it going guys, Little Dog Duck here, and today I'm bringing you the long-awaited quest guide, Morning's End Part 2. Um, this is a very difficult quest, it has one of the most difficult puzzles in the game. I'm going to go over that later in the quest though, when we get to that point. Um, this is a master difficulty quest, it is, it is very difficult, um, so let's just get right into it. Um, we're going to start with the quest requirements, and those are, well... It is just the completion of Morning's End Part 1. However, uh, Morning's End Part 1 has a lot of prerequisites itself. So if you've completed Morning's End Part 1, it's safe to assume you've completed all the prerequisites. And you'll be able to do this quest. As for the skill requirements, there actually aren't any requirements. However, 43 plus prayer for protect from melee is highly recommended. As well as 60 plus agility um, is also very, very highly recommended. Even 70 agility um, might be better. Um, so if you have that, you'll, you'll probably run into a little bit of frustration, um, but not as much. If you don't have 60 agility, I would recommend not even attempting um, this quest. It's not worth the frustration right now. You're just going to want to train your agility to 60 or higher, even 70 or higher, um, because I ran into some problems with the specific shortcut that requires that agility level, and I have 73 plus agility. Um... So that's what I'm, I'm telling you, that 60 plus is very highly recommended. Don't even attempt this without 60 plus agility unless you are just a madman. Moving on to the needed items for this quest, you're going to need a full set of Mourner's Gear, including the gas mask. So just type into your bank Mourner's Gear if you have everything that comes up. Um, that's the full set of Mourner's Equipment, except for the gas mask. Then you have to search for the gas mask and you'll have all the items. You're also going to need a chisel. The one on your tool belt does not work. You're going to need a rope. And you're going to need a death talisman. This death talisman is optional though. Um, but if you don't bring it, um, say you're an Iron Man or something, uh, you're going to have to gather 50 random items um, from somewhere. Just, just at a point in the quest, you're going to be given a list of 50 random items. You're going to have to hunt down and bring back to a dwarf in the um, light maze. So I'm definitely recommending you bring that Death Talisman. There's no other way to get one if you are an Iron Man. You have to do these 50 random items. Uh, so, yeah, that kind of sucks. But if you're not an Iron Man, you can just buy one on the GE. They're like 900 GP. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I have to say about the Death Talisman. And then, finally, a set of magic combat equipment is highly recommended. Uh, there is no actual fights you have to complete in this quest. However, when you're in the Light Maze, there are shadow creatures that attack you. And they can deal a little bit of damage. They use melee. It's best to be able to kill those with magic rather than ignore them. As well as having that extra melee defense when using your magic combat equipment. Um, if you do bring the magic combat equipment, do not forget to include runes in this uh, needed items list. Now moving on to what items I would recommend you have in your inventory or with you at uh, just in some way. Um, you're going to want your crystal teleport seed that you got from a previous quest to return to Letya. Um fast as possible because you have to go back to Arian win um, a few times during the quest you're gonna want a beast of burden with food if you have a legendary pet you can extend your beast of burden to two hours um, but you're just gonna want a beast of burden with food and at least one extra pouch depending on what that is if you're using a spirit terror bird you might want to bring two extra pouches um, just so you can refresh your beast of burdens timer um, the reason is because there's a lot of inventory management that has to go on in this quest. You'll see um, my inventory had to drop quite a few items throughout the course of the quest um, because I didn't bring that beast of burden as well as I didn't have any food when I needed it. So I had to keep using regenerate. Now you're going to want around 10 food in your inventory. As I said, you, you will need to drop this at a point during the quest if you don't have a beast of burden. Uh, but that's no big deal because it's near the end of the quest. And then um, you're going to want to bring an agility potion just for that specific shortcut I was talking about earlier where you're going to want at least 60 agility. And if you only have 60 agility, definitely bring that agility potion. That would almost be a needed item. This is not technically the start area of the quest. This is where you speak to Arianwin to tell him of the mourner's plans. Um, but we're just going to start here and then head to the mourner's hideout. So you're going to want to speak to Arianwin and Letya to begin the quest. This is when you're going to inform him of the mourner's plans in the Temple of Light. And he tells you you should go to the Mourner's Hideout and find out what they're doing in the temple. Now you're going to want to head to the Mourner's Hideout in West Ardoin. You're going to need to equip your full Mourner's set. So just throw that on once you teleport to Ardoin. I just use a home teleport um, as it's the easiest way. Everyone should have that and it's easily easy to get if you don't have that. 
is you just have to activate the lodestone. Also, if you're since this is just the beginning of the video, I want to add I'm going to be doing this video with no sped up parts at all, except for some of the dialogue um, where you don't have to choose any options. Um, that's because I'm expecting you to do this quest, although as though you are following along completely with my video next to your game and you're just clicking where I click and doing exactly what I do as that's really going to be the best way to do this for this quest. But as I said, you're going to want to equip your mourner's gear and then head to West Ardoin. Make sure you don't have any weapons equipped or anything like that. Just your mourner's gear, including the gas mask. And head to West Ardoin. The Mourner's Hideout is north of the door to West Ardoin. Still in the same place for Morning's End Part 2, if you did that quest recently and remember anything about this. Climb down the trap door in the northwestern corner. And once you're in, just run south to the Head Mourner. This is when you're actually going to begin the quest. However, you had to inform Arian when of the Mourner's plans to be able to begin the quest. So that's why we started there. So you're going to speak to the Head Mourner and ask if he has the key for your next next task. He's going to tell you about the temple and he wants you to investigate what happened at the temple because there's a dig team that has gone missing. He's going to give you a freshly cut key or a new cut key or something like that. It's a key um, and that's just what it's called. And you have to head into the temple um, and find the dead dig team. So open the door um, on the western side of this little building here. And then you're going to run all the way west past the dark beasts. Um, and go all the way till you find the temple and the dead dig team. At this point, you can equip um, your combat equipment um, and a weapon so you can fight back with the shadows that attack you very frequently while you're down here. Um, just so you take less damage and could kill them. You just have to make sure you re-equip that mourner's gear while you're in the mourner's hideout. You're going to get this little cutscene showing you the dead guards and slaves. Once that cutscene's over, you're going to want to search the guards. As the guards will have items you need to search, make sure you have two free inventory spaces um, for this part. You're going to get a book and a color wheel from the guard that you search uh, successfully that has the items on him. You're going to want to read that book. And then you're going to want to use your crystal teleport seat if you have one to return to let you. You want to go east and speak to Arianwin in the uh, room he's always in, in the house in like the center of the town. And your character will tell him about the temple that you found and that the mourners are trying to dig up and get the power from. He tells you the temple has a, a death power of some sort, which is just the death altar. That's why you need the death talisman. Um, but you're watching this because it's a guide, not because you care about the story, so I'll just shut up. Just click through the dialogue until you get to the next part where you're going to do something. So now you're going to want to return to West Ardoin. Make sure you re-equip your mourner's gear with, and have no weapon equipped um, so you can get back into the hideout. I apologize for any low frame rates. I was downloading a uh, game during this. I realized it was dropping my frames a little too late. Um, so I apologize for that. It gets better. 
in a little bit. So uh, just for a little while, you got to deal with it. You're going to go back to the temple. So once you get into the mourner's hideout, don't even worry about talking to the head mourner as you don't have to talk to him anymore during the course of this quest. This is where you begin your first little trek through the temple of confusing puzzle. Um, so you just have to go all the way back to the temple, past the dark beasts again. If you have prayer, turn on protect from magic. Remember to re-equip all your combat equipment because there are a lot of shadows in here that can do some pretty good damage to you, but they have low health so they're easy to kill. Once you're in the temple, you're going to want to climb up the staircase just to the west of the original crystal, and then you're going to run to the south wall and there's going to be a ladder. It blends in with the wall pretty well, but you can hover over it, it'll say climb up ladder. You're going to want to climb up that ladder from here on out. This is going to be referred to as the south wall ladder, or the ladder on the south wall or something. Um, run north from the ladder. You're on the top floor now, and you're wanna, gonna want to climb down the staircase on the uh, just to the west. Climb up the other side of the staircase once you go down, and then from here go east, and there will be a black crystal against the eastern wall. You're gonna want to use your chisel on the crystal. And you're going to get a piece of crystal. Then you're going to teleport back to Letya to go to Arianwin. Speak to Arianwin once you're back in Letya. He hasn't moved. Still in the same spot. So it's still easy. You're going to have a dialogue option or a dialogue box that looks almost exactly the same as the last time you talked to him. However, he's going to mention the crystal and you're going to say like this one. Um... You show the crystal to Arianwen and he's going to summon Elund. Once the dialogue box uh, closes after you click through all of it here, you're going to want to use that crystal on Elund. She says that she'll enchant it. Just talk to her again once uh, after a couple seconds. She's going to give you the newly made crystal back. And then you're going to speak to Arianwin. He's going to tell you that you need to place it on the altar on the top floor that you got it off of. Or you need to use it on the altar on the bottom floor and then place it on the crystal you got it off of back on the top floor. Um, it sounds really easy, but doing that is when the di extremely difficult puzzle everybody complains about begins. So you're going to want to go back to Ardoin now, back to West Ardoin, and go down to the Mourner's Hideout. Make sure you have your full mourner's gear equipped and no weapon equipped. This is the last time you'll have to throw it on um, for now. As the rest of this quest really takes place in the temple itself.
Head back to the temple through the western door. Once again, if you have prayer, you're going to want to turn on Protect from Magic so you don't get attacked by these Dark Beasts, as they can do a little bit of damage. As well as once you're in the temple, if you have prayer, you might as well just flick Protect from Melee uh, whenever you get attacked by the Shadows. And finally, um, your Regenerate ability on your uh, Action Bar, you, if you just click on the heart where your health points are, if you have Adrenaline, it's going to regenerate your health. This is a good way to conserve food or not even need food while you're in the temple. Uh, if you just kill enough shadows, you'll gain some adrenaline, and then you can regain your health that way. So this is the part where we start the super, ultra, crazy, confusing puzzle. Uh, I'm going to have all the everything you need to do put on the screen. If you hate my voice, you can mute this completely. Um, the rest of this quest is really just going to be me reading the dialogue options on the screen. To start, you're going to want to pull the crystal collector right here and collect from the crystal collector. You're going to need five inventory spaces for this. You're going to have four mirrors and you're going to get one colored crystal. So choose the third chat option to take all the items. As I said, you're going to need five spaces needed. And you're going to want to place one of the hand mirrors in the pillar directly behind you. This is going to be known as the starting pillar from here on out. This will always reflect to the north, as it should. Then you're going to want to run to, a mi to the pillar to the north and place a mirror in that pillar. Once you've done that, you're going to search the pillar of light. Make sure you're not in combat. You're going to see a lot of jump cuts during the video. You want to choose the second chat option to rotate the mirror. And click where it says rotate mirror to rotate the mirror. Um, rotate the mirror so the light beam faces west. You can just copy what I have here. That's what your mirror should look like for the mirror to be facing west. And then you're going to run to the next pillar to the west and place a mirror. Now you're going to want to rotate the mirror so that the light beam is facing south. You're going to see a lot of jump cuts in this mirror. It's not because of anything specific. Um, it's just going to be me editing out the combat to save time as this is already an extremely long video. Now, once you have the mirror rotated south, you're going to want to run to the next pillar to the south and place the yellow crystal in the light pillar. And then you're going to want to go to the next pillar to the south and place a mirror in that pillar. Once you're out of combat, rotate the mirror in the pillar so that it is facing east. And it shines to the blue light door. This is how you open the light doors. By having the uh, opposite color, basically. And now you're going to want to use the handholds on, hand on the wall to climb across to the blue door. This is a very difficult shortcut. It has a very high failure rate. Uh, you can see a little cut there where I just edited, in, or edited out all my failures. If you have an agility potion, that's when you're going to drink it. Pass through the light door once you get across and open and search the chest. I can't stress enough to open and search. You'll have to do it again if you don't do that. You're going to get some crystals and some mirrors from this. Just make sure that you open and search. Once you're done doing that, you're going to want to head back to the crystal collector, which is where the starting pillar was. Just start the next door. Pulling the crystal collector um, by the starting pillar... Um, takes all the mirrors and all the crystals out of all the pillars and puts them in your inventory. Um, so you're going to need uh, an extra two inventory spaces now. Uh, so you're going to have fi need five more inventory spaces on top of what you have already. So pull it, the lever and then collect from the crystal collector. The third chat option is just to take all the items. And then you're going to place a mirror in the starting pillar. It's going to shine north, which is the direction we always need it to shine. Now go to the next pillar and place the mirror. Rotate the mirror so that the uh, light is shining west. Run west to the next pillar and place the cyan crystal inside of it. And then you're going to go west to the next pillar after this and place a mirror inside of that pillar. This can be kind of confusing. I know that's why I have this slowed down so you guys can just follow along exactly with what I'm doing. Rotate that mirror so it's shining to the pillar to the north. 
run to the north uh, pillar, just the next one north, and use a mirror in that. And you're going to want to rotate that mirror um, so that it is shining to the east towards the magenta door. Go to the next pillar and you're going to use the yellow crystal in that pillar. Um, this is going to dye the light green and then you can pass through the light door. And once again, I'm going to stress that you open and search the chest. You'll have to do this all over again if you do not search the chest. You're going to get two more mirrors and now you're going to want to head back to the crystal collector so we can start the next door. Once you're back, you're going to want to pull the crystal collector and uh, collect from it. You're going to need six inventory spaces now uh, to take all the items. And then you're going to, want to use a mirror in the starting light pillar. It's going to shine north. And you're going to want to run to the next pillar and place a mirror in that one. Rotate the mirror so that the light is shining to the floor below. You're going to want to uh, orientate the mirror so that it is uh, just like mine right here. You're going to want the skinny end on the north side. And then you're going to want to run downstairs to the pillar under this one. It's going to be just north of the stairs. Now you're going to want to place a uh, mirror in the pillar to the northeast. This is the one with the light beam. You'll see it coming into it. And then use a mirror in the next light pillar to the west. Search the light pillar, rotate the mirror, and rotate it so the mirror or so the light is shining north through the little holes in the wall here. And then run to the pillar to the north with the light beam and place a mirror in that pillar. If any of this is confusing you, just follow what my character does in the game. Once you place the mirror in the pillar, you're gonna to want to rotate that mirror so that it's shining uh, back upstairs. You'll see the beam coming out of the pillar. And once you've done that, it's just you're gonna to want to head right back upstairs. You're gonna to want to go to the middle floor. Uh, so you're just gonna go up the stairs and then go to the pillar above the one you just put the mirror in. So run up the stairs and then go north. You can see the light beam will be shining out of the pillar. And once you get to the pillar, you're going to want to place the yellow crystal inside the pillar so that the light beam turns yellow. Once you've done this, you're going to want to climb up the ladder um, on the north side. Use the mirror on the pillar right near the ladder. And then you're going to want to rotate the mirror so the light is shining to the west. Now you're going to climb down the ladder and run south towards the blue door uh, where the ladder is on the southern wall. Now you're going to want to climb up the ladder on the south wall. Um, it, it's just right by the blue door. And once you're up the ladder, you're going to climb, or run to the northwest corner of the floor. Uh, you can do that by going down the staircase in the middle of the room and then back up. And then um, just to the northwestern corner. There will be some agility shortcuts that your character will jump through on his own. You don't have to uh, click on them at all. Your character just jumps through them. You'll get some agility experience. And... That's just all on the way there. Now 
Use a mirror on the pillar. There are some shadows that are going to attack you in this corner. So you're going to want to kill those shadows. Um, there's, there's about two that will attack you. And then rotate the mirror so that the light is shining to the south. Now you're going to want to run all the way to the south, uh, southwestern corner and place a mirror in the pillar. Now you're going to want to rotate the mirror so that the light is shining down to the floor below. Um, you're going to want to rotate your mirror just like mine is rotated. It's kind of hard to describe how it is, so just look at the way mine's rotated and get it like that. And then you're going to want to return to the ladder on the southern wall and climb down uh, one floor. Now, once you're down the ladder, um, you're going to want to walk west, then north, and then west into a room with a hole in the floor. Crawl over the low wall blocking the room, and then there's going to be a rock on the uh, western side of the room. Use your rope on the rock, and then you're going to climb down the rope. Now walk west, and then you're going to be able to go through the light door. And once again, I'm going to stress this. Make sure you open and search the chest. Please don't forget to search the chest, as you'll have to go back and do that last puzzle all over again entirely. You're going to get a blue crystal. And now, rather than returning to the crystal collector on the middle floor and getting all your mirrors and stuff back, you're not going to do that yet. You're going to want to return to the middle floor by climbing up the rope and go to the crystal um on the north or go to the pillar on the north side to retrieve your yellow crystal so just climb back up the rope and then climb over the low wall and you'll be able to uh run all the way to the north side where you put the yellow crystal in the pillar You're going to want to search the pillar, um, and it's going to give you an option. So choose the option to take the yellow crystal out of the pillar, and then you're going to want to use your blue crystal that you just got and place it in the pillar. Go up the ladder on the southern side of the room, not on the north side that you're by right now. Run all the way to the south side and go up the ladder there. Once you're here, you're going to want to return to the northwestern corner of the room. Once again, you're going to have those agility shortcuts that you have to go through that aren't really agility shortcuts, but just kind of like traps that your character will jump through. If you have that recommended agility level for the quest, it won't be a problem. You're going to want to search the pillar and rotate the mirror so that the light is shining to the floor below. Just once again, rotate it so that it looks like mine, like it does here. And now you're going to want to go back down the ladder on the southern wall.
now you're going to want to go down the stairs to the north to go back down to the bottom floor. And now you're going to want to run to the northwestern corner and pass through the light door. In the pillar in the center of the room, you're going to want to rotate the mirror so that the light beam is facing south on the other light door. Pass through the light door and uh, you're going to want to search the chest to the east. Make sure you open and search the chest. You're going to get a fractured crystal as well as two more mirrors. Now you're going to want to pass back through the light door and then rotate the mirror in the pillar in between the light doors so it's facing to the east. That way you can exit the room um, through the light door you came in in the first place. At this point, we're about halfway done with the puzzles. However, they just continue to get harder and more confusing. But you're using a guide, and it's my guide, so it's it's just fantastic. This is the best guide you've ever seen in your life. Um, so this this isn't even bad, you know. This is easy. Now you're gonna want to go back to the crystal collector on the middle floor, and you're also gonna leave a like on this video because uh, I've been working on this for four days now at this point, and it'd, be, it'd just be great if you could leave a like on this video, maybe even subscribe just while you're at it. Uh, that would make my day. As of uploading, this is the longest video I've ever made. And the most time I've ever put into a video. Just this is exhausting. How much time I put into this. Um, so if you could do that for me. Maybe even like leave a comment. If you're at this point and you've actually watched the video this far. That'd be really cool. But anyways, if you've just been following along with what I've been doing. You want to pull the lever and collect all the items. You can drop the book you have and chisel. As well as the um, other items you can pick. You'll be able to pick stuff up once you place mirrors in the starting pillar and stuff. Um, at this point, we need to open the blue door again to place the crystal inside. So use a mirror. If you remember how to do that, you can just mute me at this point. Because I'm kind of just rambling. I, I, I'm tired, you know, whatever. Place a mirror in the pillar to the north of the starting pillar and rotate it so that the light beam is facing west. Like I said, if you remember how to open the blue door from the first puzzle we did, you just ignored me. And if you sucked with the handholds, because you don't have the agility level for it, or you just got really unlucky, um, you're going to hate this part of the quest again, because you have to climb across the handholds. But yeah, place a mirror in the next pillar to the west, and then run south, and place the yellow crystal in the middle pillar uh, in the room. And then run to the next pillar south, and place a mirror in it, and then you're going to rotate it so that it is um, shining to the east. Now, um, you're going to climb across the handholds again. If you still have an agility potion, drink it. Uh, if you got a summer pie or something, eat it. Um, but you're going to go across the handholds here. You won't notice a jump cut here because I actually got it on my first try. It was exciting. Pass through the light door once you get across. And then you're going to want to place uh, the blue crystal in the pillar with the blue door. That's it. And then use the handholds to climb back across. And now you're going to want to dismantle a little bit of what you just did to open the blue door without pulling the crystal collector. So search the uh, uh, pillar right here and remove the mirror. It's the first chat option. And then you're going to want to take the yellow crystal out of the next pillar. Now run north 
and then uh, rotate the mirror and the next pillar so that it shines up to the top floor. Um, just rotate it how mine is rotated. That way you can get it pretty easy. Sorry for the jump cuts. They're just I was fighting quite a bit at this point, so I edited it out. Once you've done that, you're going to climb up the ladder on the southern wall. I was killing these guys because my health was getting pretty low and I wanted to build the adrenaline to use a regenerate ability as I dropped all my food because I needed more inventory space. And hopefully, unlike you, um, I wasn't smart enough to bring a beast of burden. So now you're going to want to run to the pillar above the one with the light beam um, that you just directed up. It's going to be on the other side of the stairs. So climb down and then climb up on the other side. And it's going to be the uh, light pillar uh, just a little bit east of where you are. You're going to place a mirror in that pillar and then rotate it so that the light beam is shining south through the little holes in the wall. Now climb back down the stairs and up the other side. And now you're going to place the fractured crystal in the pillar just to the southeast. Um, the one just on the other side of the hole in the wall. And it's going to split the beam into a bunch of different light beams. And now you're going to want to place a mirror in the pillar just to the west. And then rotate the mirror so the light beam is shining down, um, like down to the floor below. And then climb down the ladder on the southern wall. You want to run down the stairs um, just to the north. That'll bring you down right to the entrance of the temple. And you're going to want to place a mirror in the pillar to the southwest. It's going to have the green beam coming into the top of it. And if it doesn't, you did something wrong. You need to go back. Um, you're going to want to rotate the mirror so it shines south like that run to the pillar that you just sent the light beam into place a mirror in that pillar and rotate it so it's shining to the east and has is hitting a light door now you're not going to go in yet you're going to go back upstairs to the top floor using the stairs and the southern ladder there is another light door of a different color we need to open to get to the final chest So you're going to return to the fractured crystal using the ladder and the stairs, as I said. And now you're going to want to place a mirror in the pillar near the ladder. And once you finally get out of combat with these shadows, you're going to want to rotate the mirror so it's shining to the east. Now run to the pillar to the east that you just put the light beam into and place a mirror. And you're going to want this mirror to shine uh, the light beam down to the floor below. This is going to go through the blue crystal you placed in the blue room and open up the second light door. No, actually you have to place a mirror. It's going to, it's going to make it so you can place a mirror in that light door. So now you're going to run, want to run to the bottom floor using the southern ladder and the stairs. And run to the southeast corner where the light doors are located. You can go through the first light door.
You're going to put that mirror in the light pillar in the middle. Go through the light door and then make sure you open and search the chest. Super important that you open and search the chest. Once you have the mirrors and the second fractured crystal, you're going to want to return to the crystal collector. This is when you're going to need the highest amount of inventory spaces. You'll be able to drop some items and pick them up again, as I said earlier. If you have a beast of burden, you know, you're not even struggling with it. You could throw stuff in there. But, you know, if you didn't, like me, because you're an idiot, um, no offense, but offense, uh, you know, you got to drop some stuff and then pick it back up. It's just a little bit of a waste of time. And, you know, this is a long enough quest as it is, so I really hope you listen to those recommended items at the beginning of the video and, uh, you brought a beast of burden. And if you don't even have the summoning level, you know, no, you should have the summoning level by now if you're doing this quest. If you're going for Plague's End, you need the summoning level. Pull the lever and collect all the items. You'll need 15 more inventory spaces than what you have already. Ignore the missing bracket. I'm not fixing that right now. And then place a mirror in the starting pillar. It's going to shine north, as always. You can pick up an item if you, if you had to drop one, like me. And then you're going to go place a mirror in the next pillar um, to the north. Now you're going to want to rotate the mirror um, so the light beam shines to the floor below. Make sure it's like mine is rotated. Just like that. And uh, you're going to want to run downstairs to the pillar under this one. However, if you had to drop more items, you're going to want to pick those up. Now the pillar you need to go to is just north of the stairs. Place a mirror in the pillar with the light beam coming into it and rotate it so it is shining to the west. And now you're going to want to place a fractured crystal in the pillar to the west, just the next one to the west. If it doesn't work, use the other fractured crystal. It might not fit. You just have to do a little bit of trial and error. If it does fit, now you've got four more light beams. And then you're going to want to run to the south and place the other fractured crystal in the pillar. Now we're ready to work on the final puzzle. So you're going to place a uh, hand mirror in the pillar to the west. And then you're going to, want to rotate the mirror so the light beam is shining up to the top floor. Now you're going to want to run upstairs, then climb the ladder on the southern wall. You can see the light beam here got turned green from the crystal that's automatically in that pillar. Now you're going to want to run one pillar north and one pillar west. You might not be able to see the light beam as it can be bugged sometimes. Um, but you just need to place a mirror in that pillar to know where it is. So one north and one west is where the uh, light beam is going to be. Place a mirror in that pillar. The light beam will be completed now, and we can begin to work on the next light beam. So you're going to want to return to the bottom floor where the fractured crystals are located. Man, you only have to do this once. Just remember that. Only have to do this once, and then you can move on to within the light. And then finally, Plague's End, and then you'll be in Prif. And you'll have all those awesome scaling methods. This is totally worth it. Just remember that. So now you're going to want to place a mirror in the pillar to the southeast. And then you're going to want to rotate the mirror. Actually, I don't think you have to rotate the mirror. Just place a mirror in the pillar. If it shines up, you got it. There you go. It shines up. Climb back to the top floor and then using uh, use the southern ladder um, once you climb up the stairs. You're going to want to run one pillar north and one pillar east. And then place a mirror in the pillar. This will automatically uh, orientate it the right direction. And then run one pillar west. 
um, to the one that has four directions and place a mirror in the pillar. You're going to want to rotate that mirror so that it's shining to the north through the little uh, holes in the wall. And then run north to the next pillar that's going to be on the other side of the stairs. And place a mirror in the pillar just by the stairs. Rotate the mirror so that the light beam is shining to the west. And then place the blue crystal in the next pillar to the west. And now that light beam is going to also be completed. So return to the area with the fractured crystals on the bottom floor. And then you're going to run to the north pillar with the light beam, which is the furthest pillar to the north, which, which has a light beam. Kind of self-explanatory, but I didn't want to make anything confusing. Um, so if that helped you a little bit, you know, you're welcome. Now you're going to want to place a mirror in the pillar. And then rotate the mirror so that it's shining to the floor above. Once again, you can just mirror what my mirror looks like. Or you can see the light beam sticking out up to you. And then you're going to run to the middle floor pillar above this one. And you're going to want to place the yellow crystal inside the pillar. Obviously to turn the light yellow. Now climb up the ladder on the north wall. And then you're going to want to place a mirror in the nearest pillar. Um, and rotate it so that the light is shining to the west. If it automatically does it, you know, you're good. Now climb down the ladder and then you're going to run to the south wall and climb up the southern ladder. If that's you and you see her in this video, you know, shout out to you, man. But I doubt you'll be watching this video because you did the quest. Now you're going to want to run to the northwest corner of the uh, top floor. We're almost done here. Are you excited? This is like the final light beam we have to like really screw with other than just rotating a couple of mirrors. I'm excited, man. I just want to, I just want to get this video out. You know, I want it to be done. I want to be done with it. Like five days I've been working on this thing. Not like like hour wise, but like five separate days I've sat down and worked on this video. So I just want it to be done. Place a mirror in the pillar and rotate it so the light beam is shining to the east. Like we did earlier. And then run to the next pillar to the south once you've rotated the mirror. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm just, I just, I'm so excited. I hated this quest. So run south to the next pillar and then place a mirror in that pillar. And then you're going to rotate the mirror so that the light beam is shining to the east. Oh, it's not outlined. I'm not fixing it. I'm not fixing it. I just said I want to be done. Now, um... Run back to the stairs at the center of the top floor and descend all the way down to the bottom floor using those stairs. Isn't it weird how when you walk through the light beam, it still is there as though it passes through your body like you don't matter. Look at, see? Nothing. Your character doesn't exist. 
pass through the light uh, door here, and then rotate the mirror in this pillar so that it's shining to the east. Splendid. And now you're going to run west and pass through the final light door. Now the quest is almost over if you brought a death talisman. If not, I apologize for you not bringing a death talisman. Um, or you being Iron Man. You're going to need to get, collect 50 items that um, this dwarf here gives to you. Um, you might want to pause at this point or when the dialogue's over. Once you've gotten your 50 items so you can follow along after you've collected them. It's 50 random items. I wasn't going to do that. Um, it's, it's mostly just going to be buying them on the GE. Um, but if you're an Iron Man, you will need to collect those items as you can't get a Death Talisman. So I apologize. But you knew that when you went into this quest. Um, so use your Death Talisman after the dialogue on the Mysterious Ruins. And then you're going to want to use that newly made crystal you were given by Elund on the Death Altar. Do not teleport out. Do not. Go back through the portal that you came in through. Pass through the light door. And uh, return the black crystal. Return to the black crystal on the top floor. Make sure you rotate this mirror so you can get out the light door here. Just rotate it so it's facing west. That's east. God, I'm an idiot. That's east. Climb up the staircase. Climb up the left side of the staircase. And run all the way um, east. And then use the newly made crystal on the black crystal. This is going to turn the crystal no longer black. Now you can teleport out back to Arianwin. So you're going to want to talk to Arianwin. Click through the dialogue here. You'll tell him that, you know, you fixed the Temple of Light. You got the security system back in place. It's all good. It's all good. That's going to be quest complete. If this helped, be sure to leave a like. Comment out down below if you have any questions, suggestions, tips, tricks, or complaints about my complaining. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're bored, check out some of my other stuff. I do boss guides, quest guides, and event guides. Thank you.